it's through baptism that we're all called to be responsible for that essential mission of the church evangelization, building up the kingdom of God, the call to proclaim the good news and call people to conversion. It's with this calling that we are embarking on the Sharing Our Faith, Shaping Our Future campaign for the Archdiocese of Portland. It's a journey of renewed faith to strengthen our 164-year-old archdiocese, to energize its evangelizing mission, to provide educational opportunities for all of our people, and to secure the financial future of the Catholic Church in Western Oregon. Ultimately, this campaign is about people of faith. It's a four-part project which touches the lives of everyone in the parishes of the Archdiocese. Seminary education, priest retirement, Catholic education, faith formation, and the needs of each parish. Each is a priority and will be addressed to meet the needs of our people and solidify our financial future. The Archdiocese of Portland is blessed to have more than 40 seminarians in formation to become priests at Mount Angel, where most of the seminarians study. That's what it's all about, you know. It's, what it's, it's about the people and about uh, being able to serve them and, and give my life over to the church. It is all about the people and it's the reason I'm here. This blessing comes with a responsibility. The current cost of educating each seminarian is $40,000 per year. The Archdiocese needs to raise an initial $7 million to provide for these future shepherds' tuition, as well as room and board for the next three to four years so that they can fulfill their vocations. Additionally, the Archdiocese wants to ensure seminary education is funded for decades to come through a $10 million trust fund. Well, we'd like to establish an endowment so that there's a base from which we can draw every year. Right now, we've been leaning on our annual appeal very, very heavily to fund the education of our seminarians, and that's obviously a priority. I mean, my people want good priests, and so uh, providing them with good priestly leadership is something I see as very critical. Our archdiocese has blessed the seminarians with the, uh, the gift of being able to just focus on, on being at the seminary and why they're here, uh, rather than um, how they're going to stay. And that's, uh, I think that's a big, just a big, huge advantage that, uh, that is just very helpful. While we need to ensure we provide for our Archdiocese future priests, we also need to take care of our aging shepherds. The Lord is my strength and I praise Him. He is the Savior of my life. Alleluia. Currently, the Archdiocese has 53 retired priests with 22 others in sight of their golden years. We are committed to bolster the Priest Retirement Fund and Medical Benefits Fund by more than $10 million to care for those who have spent their lives in faithful service to others. The older men <laughs> served in a time when, frankly, priestly compensation was grossly inadequate, may I say. Uh, there was no pension set aside for them. They were even discouraged from contributing to Social Security. And, uh, you know, they didn't have much. Now we're telling our priests, all right, we all contribute to Social Security, we have a pension fund, and we also tell them you should set some money aside for savings. I mean, no one wants to be a burden. I know in my own family, no, nobody wants to be a burden. We all have a little bit of independence in us, you know, we hate to surrender it. But when you get older and sometimes when things get difficult, you need help. We're very happy to know that the diocese is able and willing to uh, uh, promise that when we leave here, and get to a nursing home and run out of our own money, as some of us will, then we'll be taken care of. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sharing our faith and shaping our future require foresight to attend to the entire body of Christ, giving all Catholics the opportunity to enhance their faith and service. The $10 million project would funnel needed funds to campus ministry, religious education, lay ministry and diaconate formation. In the old days, it was let the clergy handle all these things, and more and more, it, it's clearly seen that all of us who are baptized believers have a responsibility for that evangelizing mission. So the purpose is to kind of strengthen those who must deliver the message, our, our leaders, and then more effectively to train the laity for the work that's basically being put in their hands more and more, not only within the church, but of course outside the church, which is their primary responsibility. It's really an exciting time. Um, I think it is the wave of the future. This is 
the way that the, the work of the kingdom is getting done is through lay ecclesial ministers in a collaborative effort with clergy and with religious. It is important, the education is important, so that lay ministers can bring people closer to their faith, closer to Jesus. And the way to do that is by education. Why the investment? Because of the impact religious education has on the body of Christ. My faith is my life and I just want to learn as much about it as I can. The more you know about your faith, the closer you get to God, I think. If you inspire one person by taking a class or you inspire one volunteer or parishioner to get excited about scripture, to get excited about their faith, you know, the, the small amount you put into education has lasting effects and you can never really count the monetary value of it because it affects, you know, the trickle-down effect of education is amazing. So a big part of that is helping people to understand the value of their faith in their daily life, here and now. Not only eternally, but how they can receive that peace and that joy and that hope in their daily struggles and make life more fruitful and to live, as Jesus said, to be able to receive life abundantly. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Inspiring faith and service is why the campaign is also addressing the needs of diaconate formation. They give their lives to this afterwards, and uh, they need the education. They need that, that full training. The five years itself is very costly, to say the least. The diocese picks up a lot of that expense, certainly on formation parts and programs but there's still a big section of the uh, actual intellectual formation, the, the degree part, which the men themselves have to pick up. The investment in education is also a matter of justice. By bolstering the Catholic Education Endowment Fund, or CEF, to ensure all families, regardless of income, can send their children to Catholic schools. As the costs increase, and the religious are no longer as significantly involved as they were in the past, if we don't provide more tuition assistance, we're going to become educators pretty much only for the more affluent who can afford our schools, and we don't want that to be. So that's why our Catholic Education Endowment Fund, which was started again back in the 90s, needs to be strengthened. Think about the people who are going to be following us, and think about the kids who are going to be future leaders. Do you want some people who are leaders who are making moral choices? I hope so. And we need to prepare those kids. We need the funds to do that. The needs of each individual parish in the Archdiocese also will be addressed. Each parish will keep 25% of what it raises in the campaign. It will be up to the parish to determine how the campaign will address its needs, ranging from building projects to repair issues or funding programs. In essence, we are all sharing our faith and shaping our future. This is the moment, this is the time. So I have made my pledge and I I'm grateful that uh, the people of God take care of my needs so that I can make a pledge. I'm hoping that all of you will also make a pledge to this campaign. It's really important for us to do this. Uh, it's our responsibility as Catholics to pass on the faith to future generations. And I want to thank all the people who will respond to this message. And I hope and pray that the future we're serving today will be a brighter one and a more faithful one for all Catholic people. So God bless all of you. Thank you.